and welcome back everyone to another training week uh, this time around I'm going to show the last couple of weeks before Oceania Championships and I guess I should say right off the bat that I did it I won Oceania and um, that, that doesn't mean 100% that I'm going to Tokyo but um, I did get the Oceania spot <coughs> and we have to wait for approval from the New Zealand Olympic Committee who look at a few different criteria um, here in New Zealand uh, they look for a top 16 potential which I did do at Baku World Cups a year or so ago whenever that was um, they look for an upwards trajectory which Arguably, I've also shown on P-Bars, especially in the all-round, but since P-Bars is my top 16 apparatus, um, they will be looking specifically at P-Bars. So anyway, um, I have all the routines filmed from Oceania as well. Uh, the last two weeks before Oceania was, were difficult. Uh, I think I've mentioned in previous vlogs that, that um, I'm the type where I kind of, well, freeze up isn't really the right term because it's not that I'm, that I'm stressed or anything, but my body goes through a funny process. So to adapt to that, and that process pretty much limits how much full routines I can do and it's happened so much over the years that you know I just don't care anymore and I know that well if I could talk to Mish 10 or 15 years ago I'd say mate you're not going to lose your routine fitness in a week especially if you continue training sequences um, and just to focus on being clean rather than thinking that you have to do routine after routine after routine to uh, to prepare for, for a big event. So you'll see that I did a lot less routines, uh, more refinement. I did want to do routines the week before I left one of the days and you'll see uh, after floor on pommel horse. Oh man, like I don't even know what to call it. You'll see me lashing out. You'll see me throwing fits. Um, it's quite funny. I'm 29 years old and I, and I still throw fits when things don't go my way. But that's, uh, that's simply the truth about how I feel during training. And I think any athlete can understand that you want things to go your way. You want things to go your way. And when they don't go your way, even though you've done everything and you're trying the hardest you possibly can, we can get really negative and salty, etc. And I got salty. Boy, did I get salty. But in the midst of that, that uh, more older and wiser part of me knows that on competition day, it almost um, doesn't matter what you did the week before you left um, and that's you know that's of course me personally I wouldn't I wouldn't tell or suggest to anyone to not do anything a week or two before competition um, you'll see the vaults that I was talking about last time around where you'll see there's two white mats on top of a hard of uh, on top of competition setting if those two white mats weren't there pretty much a hundred percent I wouldn't have gone to Oceania because I would have hurt myself the landings was so bad yeah but when I was there um well I think it's worth talking about Oceania now because 
I wouldn't talk about it now and then for the video which will come out pretty soon I got there on a Tuesday I had a light sesh we had podium training on Wednesday and I took that pretty seriously usually when I do podium I'll do like you know half routines and you know may maybe routines if it's like world championships but I felt like well it's such an important competition I should do four routines I should take it seriously and, and check what happens so that whatever adjustments I need to make, I'll know uh, how to make them for the comp day. So podium was Wednesday, Thursday I just uh, went into the gym and took care of my body and Friday was the big day Friday the way the competition was structured there was five athletes total competing for that Oceania spot for from Australia and just me unfortunately from New Zealand the original plan was to do Oceania at Pacific Rim in 2019 or 2020 I forget what year it was um, but COVID hit so Pacific Rim had to be cancelled and we were supposed to have four from Aussie Australia and four from New Zealand uh, we, we, we would have sent Ethan and Devi and, and Sam but Devi and Ethan were stuck in America and Ethan is now at Penn State so he would have had to go through a whole lot of complications and quarantining. So long story short, in the end, it was only me. And I told her, uh, I said a couple times, I forget to who, but I felt like I was intruding on, on their process. Because I was the only New Zealander there. Here on these pagans, I'm just trying to keep my feet together, um, and I'm trying to straighten out my my catchev because I'm uh, I'm getting a point three for the pike, I think. So where was I? Um, yeah, so there was only one of me. Um, competition was Friday. There was uh, five of us starting on floor. I was fourth up and we followed the usual uh, what do you call it system where the last guy moves up and the guy that started the Pratus moves down to fifth in the end um, I was so zoned I think everybody was zoned I didn't look at a single score or, or a single full routine and um, Man, P P bus high bucket first four Pratus went good, and I did glimpse the scoreboard during P bar warm up, and I saw I was at the top. But we all know anything can happen on on P bars and on high bars, so you know I knew that it didn't mean anything. So anyway, I had the P bars of my life, scored fourteen eight with a clean watered down routine of a five eight start value. And then went to high bar. Oh, here yeah, you're about to see me eat it. First one wasn't too bad. Yeah. Yeah, our competition landing is probably harder than the actual competition landing. That top blue mat. So after that, I decided, you know what, it's not worth it. Let's just get some numbers in on the usual vault and I remember it was really discouraging um, I even thought that I'd just compete a full twist and do it as clean as I could so um, high bar was last I switched out Coleman for the Zoli Min oh here come the antics 
yeah it's like it's like just trying to convince my body to to do it but anyways um convince uh changed coleman for zoli man and i knew pretty much if i catch the pagan then the rest of the routine will be 90 percent you know i'll make it through so i caught the pagan um went all the way through landed the dismount and uh man i was so happy i let out a big scream i sat down and when uh w when i saw mitchell and let me just say to start off that any of the five of us could have had it um any of us could have had it it was anyone's game it was a ma matter of who hits six out of six the cleanest and uh, th there was a a few mistakes but really not that many um well i didn't see exactly every what what the other guys did but um i think second was mitchell third was jesse jesse fell on horse mitchell had a messier p bar than what he's capable of so if those two hit their stuff they would have come out on top so it was anyone's game and uh there was clay and uh michael and i know clay, clay and michael hit 81s in their state champs and in their trials so it was really anyone's game but when i saw mitchell's 81 5 after i initially looked up at the scoreboard um, my heart kind of sank because you know i never thought i was capable of of getting that high and moments later when the new zealand coach said you did it you did it you got a 82 4 i almost thought that there was some sort of a mistake because I scored like a 75 or 6 at CSG just a few weeks prior. Um, yeah, and, and I'll be honest, I started sobbing away and let out some, some tears of joy. And had a, had a, you know, it was one of those moments that you wish it lasted longer. You wish you could be in that moment and feel it and, and, and savor it. Because you don't get to win often, you know, in the in the senior level, in the international world. And there are a few athletes that kind of dominate in their time. And the amount of those athletes that exist, you can count on your fingers. There's not many of them. For most of us, though, you, you know, you don't really get that experience of of winning all that often often so you know I, I'm, I'm thankful um, yeah it was a it was an amazing competition and I can't wait to to upload upload it I wish I had the routines of the other guys because I would have included that as well but unfortunately I wasn't able to get my uh, hands on those uh, big thank you to Blair for filming my stuff. Yeah, and I don't know what uh, what else to add there. I did it. So the announcement on whether I'll be going or not, I think will be in the mid, somewhere in the middle of June. So we'll be waiting for that. But yeah, amazing competition with five amazing guys, or four others. I can't put in words the, the intensity and, you know, the zone. But I think it's one of those moments I'll, well, I hope I remember it for as long as I, as I live. Um... We got Auckland Champs next weekend. 
I think I'll do, I want to do P-bar and high bar, but when I came back to the gym on Monday, I had to like struggle just to do a press to handstand. I used so much adrenaline and I'm just depleted. I'm depleted, so. So we'll see how we go. I'd like to put Coleman and Zoli Min in the high bar routine. I think that'll be about a 5-6. Try to do a nice and clean 6-2 P-bars. But, you know, easier said than done. I think I will leave it there. Thank you to the whole YouTube fan for all the support. For all the followings. All the best. And until next time.
That's Olympics. That's Olympics. That's Olympics, baby. Let's go. Stick. Why? Because he has a good stand. Wow. 